Welcome to Higeraji. Hello guys, welcome to the most bearded podcast of all the internet. My name is the anime industry's strongest Hige. I am Ash. How are you guys doing? Or, as I like to do this in Japanese, Anime Gyokai Saikyo Higemen Ash des. Dozo yoroshiku onegaishimasu. Alright, it's been a while, but we are finally onto the very first official episode of Higeraji. Well, yes, this is technically the second episode in recording. Like I said before, the previous one was a pilot. So the pilot is technically actually only episode zero. This one, the second one you will see on the podcast blog will actually be episode one officially. So we are finally kicking into full gear and let's begin with some recent topics. All right, for the first news of the week, one of my favorite news among all of them, I really love this wonderful story of achieving your dreams. If you guys like wrestling and if you happen to like anime slash seiyuu, and you're like me who is in this very very super specific Venn diagram that joins between these two, I have I a story for you. So very famous seiyuu, it's around about 49 years old this year. His name is Inada Tetsu. You might know him as Hairi Odd from Tournay Gundam or Deka Master in uh, Deka Ranger or probably most recently as Endeavor in My Hero Academia. He has finally made his wrestling in-ring debut on DDT's Hiragana Maso program. It might be a very interesting story like, wait, hasn't other seiyus already done this before? Well, technically yes, in the case of... There's two actually interesting cases. The first one is Aiba Aina, who was actually a wrestler turned seiyu. And then we have Inada Tetsu's colleague, Shimizu Aisa. From a seiyu, she became a wrestler. In this case, well, he's not exactly doing a long-term wrestling gig, but... So there's this company in Japan called DDT Pro Wrestling. You might have heard it before, you may have not. Probably not for the most part, because I feel like the most mainstream casual audience only probably knows WWE and New Japan Pro Wrestling by a stretch. So DDT Wrestling is it's actually a rather big company which is owned by under, I think, Abema. They're all under the same Abema family and they're actually owned by this company. They're actually under the Cyberfight banner of uh, wrestling content. And DDT Wrestling has a lot of, lot of great wrestlers, actually. If you heard of a certain Ibushi Kotar or Kenny Omega, they actually came from this promotion. And speaking of DDT Wrestling, they have a sub-promotion and one of such promotions is actually called the Muscle Series, which is, it's kind of like musical theater kind of stuff but for the modern generation so the spin-off of the spin-off is called hiragana maso where they do 2.9d wrestling musicals so it's kind of like anime where it's not exactly 2.5d because you know in anime it's, they take the existing anime characters and they turn it into live performances but you know the thing about wrestling is it is already 3d and musicals is also 3d but they're based off a character created slash drawn just for this project so it's kind of like 2.9d wrestling musical and as a fan of Inada Tetsu-san my, like myself um, you for those of you who follow his career you know that he is a huge wrestling fan he always talks about, you know, attending wrestling events like uh, Wrestle Kingdom, so on and so forth, WWE. So he has, he has a history of loving wrestling for a long time, playing wrestling characters. And just, I think about last year-ish, he actually began to do VTRs, like the opening narration for DDT-related events. And somehow this actually led to him making an appearance for DDT's Hiragana Maso musical series. Which I gotta say, it's a really wonderful thing. Well, he didn't actually fully wrestled but he did do some wrestling moves clothesline slash lariat he did like a punch kick you know like proper wrestling moves i wouldn't really boil out like like spoil details to the information because if you really love inada tetsu-san i highly recommend subscribing to wrestle universe which you can actually watch hiragana muscle and as of this recording you can probably watch every single episode that inada tetsu-san has already appeared in so if you want to watch you know a long time budding wrestling fan who became a popular seiyuu who always wanted to become a wrestler in some form or another you know it's pretty you know like I, I i cried watching him doing the wrestling moves as a wrestling fan as a seiyuu fan as also someone in the industry it's great to see someone you know even at the age of 49 fulfill his dreams of becoming a wrestler in some form or another i loved it so much and he even actually did a sign event for ddt pro wrestling hiragana muscle sign event and I think I have one or two signs coming to the mail, so I'm actually 
really looking forward to receive my Inada Tetsu The Wrestler signature. It is gonna be great. I hope to show you guys once it's out. And yeah, please subscribe to uh, Wrestle Universe. I believe it's about um, $10 a month, so it's a pretty good steal. You get to watch, uh, if you buy one month, you get one free. So you technically get two months of wrestling and you get to enjoy all of that for about $10. So, you know, if you have money to spare and you want to watch one of the best seiyus doing a very good seiyu related content in wrestling shows, please watch Hiragana Muscle and watch all of DDT. It's great. I assure you, it's really good wrestling. You get to watch Pro Wrestling Noah. You get to watch Tokyo Joshi Pro Wrestling. And you also get to watch Gambare Pro Wrestling. So you get four wrestling companies for the price of one. It's a really good steal. Go subscribe to Wrestle Universe. Please tell me if you do watch it. I want to hear what you guys think. Up next, we have some of the big game releases over this past month. There were lots of games that came out. I don't even know where to start. There were so many games. I don't know. Uh, so I got one of few, I got a few games. Two of them was actually sent to me. Big shout out and big thank you to the people at AFA slash PlayStation slash Bandai Namco Southeast Asia. I received a copy of Ghost of Tsushima, the Director's Cut, I believe was it called the Director's Cut. And also I also received a copy of Tales of Arise in the Mail. So thank you so much to the three companies. Very, very big thank you. I love playing the original Tsushima on the PlayStation 4. And I got to try a bit of it on the PS5. I actually completed the Iki Island expansion. It is really good. I, I love the huge expansion. I love how much the game looks like. It looks so beautiful on the PS4, but the game looks absolutely insane on the PlayStation 5. If you guys own a PS5, please buy Ghost of Tsushima. I love it. It looks so nice. I love it so much. If you love the original game, if you like samurai slash ninja action games, give it a try. It's great. And it also has Otsuka Aki also, you know, my favorite seiyu. So what are you guys doing? Buy the game. Give it a try. It's really good. I recommend it. It's really great. And the second game I received also in the mail, which I mentioned earlier, Tales of Arise. It came out a few days to about well, less than a week of this recording. I actually have never played a single Tales of game in my entire life. I know I'm the guy that enjoys lots of anime, Japanese culture, wrestling stuff, but no. I've watched lots of anime, I've played lots of games, but I have actually never played a single Tales game in my life. Can you guys believe it? I know, right? I'm looking to pull out to play the game. I actually play about maybe one, two, three hours of the game. So my impressions, like please do not kill me for this, it kind of feels like Dragon Quest XI. <laughs> I don't know why, but the art style, like, I guess it's a kind of cell shadedy anime style, CG kind of thing. Yeah, it looks really nice though. The game looks nice. It's like very, very fantasy style RPG, you know. You have the hero guy with the sword. You get the very cute looking princess character. I think the game is great. Um, the action is, it feels like an, it's like an action RPG. Uh, I'm not sure what to compare it to because I've, I'm not very well, I'm actually not very well versed in action RPGs. The gameplay, I don't think it's easy though, but it's challenging. I'm playing on moderate difficulty, but the game is pretty fun actually. I'm enjoying it so far. I have never played a single Tales game before, but so far, about two or three hours in, I think the game is fun. I will definitely give it a try to finish the game. Like, I will finish the game for sure, 100%. And speaking of Tales of Arise, I've actually had did an unboxing video on my YouTube channel, so guys, Please check out the unboxing for Tales of Arise. Please, please, please get my numbers up, please. Remember, like, share, subscribe, all that stuff. Yeah, thank you. And two other games which I actually got recently was uh, Tsukihime Remake and No More Heroes 3. Two of my personally biggest games of this whole year because one is a game 10 years in the making. I know Tsukihime took like, what, 10 years to actually get a remake coming out. I don't know how it took them so long. They were probably trying to earn money with FGO Gacha. So, you know, to all the people who have spent money on FGO Gacha, thank you. Now I can actually properly enjoy Tsukihime remake on the Nintendo Switch. I will also be doing an unboxing of my channel. Please look forward to it. I have not opened the game yet. I wanted to open the game, but I started playing No More Heroes 3 first. But I will probably be playing the game once I get my OLED Switch in the mail sometime in October. So I'm going to reserve my comments on Tsukihime Remake until I get my OLED Switch. And of course, like I mentioned just now, the last game that I'm looking forward to the most is I actually finished playing already. It's No More Heroes 3. It is such a good game. I don't know how to explain how great the game is. If you know Suda51, if you know No More Heroes series, this is the grand finale of them all. It is so good. 
The game was so well done. I loved it to bits. I loved it to hell. It is such an amazing game. If you want to enjoy a wonderful game, a game that's different from everything else in the market in an era where everything's either a rehash, a remake, or they all look the same. So that 51's No More Heroes 3 is so wonderful. It is such a unique game. I don't know how to explain, like it is an action game but it is a Scooter 51 action game. It is such a unique title, I don't think it will sell very well around the world but if you want to enjoy a game that's truly unique and one of a kind, something with a very wonderful backstory, you know, if you want to enjoy the history of Scooter 51, I recommend you guys to check out No More Heroes 3. Higeraji! Alright, it's time for this week's topics! My favorite anime of 2021 so far. I want to be quite honest with you guys right now. While I do love my anime, I like to watch all sorts of anime, I actually didn't really watch a lot of anime this year. I know, shocking, please do not kill me for this, but I have scoured the internet. I did watch quite a number, it's more than 10 for sure. But among all the anime that I watched so far, here's like maybe five, three to five of my favorite shows that I've watched so far. So I'm gonna count anything that began in January and maybe let's say ended until like August 2021. So a bit of choices and I uh, hope you guys agree with my choices. Please tell me, you know, send me a comment. If you don't like it, actually send me a comment too and you tell me what's your favorite anime. So here we go. All right, anime number one is Mushoku Tensei Isekai Ittara Honki Das. It is obviously, as you can hear, an isekai anime. It was uh, airing just January actually. It started earlier this year in January. It ended in March, so it was one core anime. It was done by, I think, Studio Bind. It's actually a light novel series, if I'm not wrong, which began the isekai anime trend in all of the anime verse. Like, I swear. If you've heard of XY Isekai anime, all the 500 different Isekai anime, you can actually thank Mushoku Tensei for bringing this Isekai anime boom. So before we begin talking about why I love the show, let me just give you a brief synopsis thanks to my anime list. Despite being bullied, scorned, and oppressed all of his life, a 34-year-old Shaiyan still found the resolve to attempt something heroic only for it to end in a tragic accident. But in a twist of fate, he awakens in another world as Rudius Greyrat, starting life again as a baby born to loving parents. Preserving his memories and knowledge from his previous life, Rudius quickly adapts to his new environment. With the mind of a grown adult, he starts to display magical talent that exceeds all expectations, owning his skills with the help of a mage named Roxy Megurdia. Rudius learns swordplay from his father Paul and meets Sylviette, a girl his age who quickly becomes his closest friend. As Rudius' second chance at life begins, he tries to make the most of his new opportunity while conquering his traumatic past. And perhaps one day, he may find the one thing he could not find in his old world, love. So what's exactly amazing about Mushoku Tensei? Well, personally, I do not really enjoy watching isekai anime because there are so many out there, it's all the same shtick nowadays, and honestly, it's getting boring. But for me personally, why I really enjoyed Mushoku Tensei as well, first of all, the main character who plays the soul of uh, Rudius Greyrat is Sugita Tomokazu, and he plays like a slightly like um, Hikikomori. You know how in Japanese with that, the shut ins. He plays the shut-in character really, really well, you know, a little horny old man, 30 plus year old man, stuck at home, and I'm sure, you know, if you guys know about Sugita Tomokazu, kind of feels somewhat like him. So it, it feels like there's a sense of realism among all of that. And then when he plays, like, he becomes Rudius. He tries his best to turn a new leaf, try to be serious, live a proper, fulfilling life with his new family in this new isekai world. I think it's a very touching show. I loved it so much. I think I cried like maybe two or three times. So what I feel normally when I think an anime is great is when normally I cry because if an anime can elicit an emotion in you, it's probably a good one and you should continue watching it until the end. And uh, I feel like it's great because like the pacing wasn't super fast where it was blazing all over. Like, I don't think it's super fast at least. But it feels like you could see Rudia slowly grow up. He became like a baby to about maybe adolescent age. You can see him grow to 
the the town side from his countryside, learn magic, teach other people magic. He kind of becomes more mature. He grows up. I think it's a wonderful. I want to say coming of age slash turning over a new leaf kind of story. It's very touching. I think it's great. The animation's pretty nice. The cast is pretty great. And I do want to mention how good the opening and ending theme songs to this. Oh, I believe that the opening and ending was done both by uh, Ohara Yuriko. And I want to say that the ending theme song only is so good. You have to give it a listen. You can check it out on your streaming services. Give it a try. It is so well done. I love Ohara Yuriko's like... Um, it inspires you to become better. It, it feels like it has the overarching tones of Mushoku Tensei inside. It's wonderful. It is so great. I think if you want to watch a isekai anime with a decent amount of action and a very good overarching storyline, it's really good. And, and by the way, the show is so good, I actually went out to buy the light novel. So I have about maybe three chapters of the light novel. I haven't actually opened them yet, but I'm looking to try to finish it and then maybe go beyond the actual anime airing and learn a bit more. And by the way, the next anime season has season 2 of Mushoku Tensei. So now's a very good time to catch up with Mushoku Tensei. Go watch it and once you're done, get ready for season 2 because the show is so amazing. Give it a try. Alright, our second anime in the list is Yuru Camp Season 2. Yes. I believe Yuru Camp also aired around the same time as Mushoku Tensei. It aired from January to April. It was done by, I believe, um, Half HP Studio and Mages. If you watch season 1 of Yuru Camp, um, season 2, well, it's more the same. You know, cute girls going camping and of course, like I said, before I begin continuing on with what it is, let me give a brief run-through of the synopsis. Having spent Christmas camping with her new friends, Shimarin embarks on a solo camping trip to see the New Year's sunrise by the sea. All goes according to plan until unforeseen weather blocks the roads back home, making a return trip impossible. Rin, who is now stranded for a few days, is invited by Kagamihara Nadeshiko to stay at her grandmother's house. What is supposed to be a two-day trip becomes an extended period of sightseeing and new experiences for Rin, and she encounters some new and old faces along the way. Yuru Camp Season 2 continues the story of Rin, Nadeshiko, and their friends as they further exploit the joys of camping. I'm gonna be honest, I have never done camping in my entire life. I've never done it, but after watching Season 1 of Yuru Camp, I definitely want to go camping the next time I can fly to Japan. I swear, the show is so warm, so adorable, and like it says, it's very yuruto, yurui. It's very laid back. It's just cute girls just hanging around around the Yamanashi prefecture and the surrounding prefectures, just going camping, having nice food and enjoying companionship. It's adorable. You don't need to enjoy a good animation, good story because the show's story is not the best, but it is wonderful, it is heartwarming, and the locations are so great. And the best part is because right now we're all stuck at home due to the COVID-19 situation. I feel like by living vicariously through these girls is a very great way to enjoy your free time now. And maybe, you know, once we can actually travel out of our countries, if you are not in Japan, you know, there's a, a few places you might want to pen down and then maybe actually travel there once you get the opportunity to fly back to Japan. Because I know I am. Go camping with my childhood friends, you know, who are living in Japan right now. And maybe eat some of the food that are featured in the show because yeah, like I said, I want to mention this right now actually because the food in Eurocam looks so delicious. Mm! I just want to talk about that one episode where I think Nadeshiko went to eat okonomiyaki and I love okonomiyaki and it looks so delicious. I want to go to that particular store because if I'm not wrong, the food they're actually shown in this show is actually from real places. So I want to pen down the locations. I am definitely going to have some really nice okonomiyaki in wherever that store was. Go camping right there, you know, it's so good. If you want to enjoy a very great show without turning on your brain, just enjoy a nice laid-back show. I recommend giving Yuru Camp Season 2 a try. And for our third show for this episode is one of my favorite shows. It's not the best show. I, I feel like it's one of the best shows though. It is Uma Musume Pretty Derby Season 2. 
Yes, it is that meme. It is one of the most popular franchises of all of anime this year. It has spawned a video game that was about, let's say, four to five years in the making. But yes, let me go with the synopsis before I begin with my comments. Within the horse racing world, the horse girls of Team Spica have been gaining popularity as they continue to rack up victories. The one receiving the most attention in the group is Tokai Teo, known for her cheerful personality and exceptional running skills. Teo aims to become an undefeated Triple Crown horse girl by winning all three G1 races consecutively, a feat that has not been accomplished since the legendary Simbori Rudolph managed to do so many years ago. On her path to obtaining the Triple Crown, Teo is met with many challenges encountering both old and new rivals. Amidst her fierce rivalries, however, Teo is soon confronted with decisions that will leave a huge impact on her very own racing career. As you can guess, this is probably focused around, hmm, maybe Tokai Teo? I don't know, maybe? Yeah. So yeah, this show, this show features Tokai Teo and I believe, you know, it's not complete without Majiro McQueen, so it actually centers around both Tokai Teo and Majiro McQueen. Of the two of them trying to, you know, outpace each other to become the number one Uma Musume. So yeah, it's a sports anime, it's a story show, it's, it's a crying anime because boy, I don't want to spoil anything but like once you watch the show, you're definitely going to cry because I cried like a baby like what, three times watching this show like, it's just a show about horse girls, why am I crying, right? So, you know, the people at Toho Animation and Psy Games did so well, as well as Studio Kai. They did so well, I love the show so much, you know. The animation was really, really nice. I thought they did a banger job on the animation. The cast of Team Speaker, you know, back in full force, we have everybody there. We have Special Week, we have Suzuka, my favorite horse, Ore no Aiba, making a cameo and, you know, what I like about this season 2 is that they brought in new characters that we can come to love. Like, I'm, I'm sure everybody loves Rice Shower now. Rice, Gambaru! Gold Ship is still meme god. Uh, Twin Turbo, Turbo Sensei. Honestly, I think one of the best Uma feature in the show, you know. A lovable loser who does the best and she eventually wins, like, wins a race and everybody loved that. I mean, who doesn't love Twin Turbo? Honestly, like, it makes you learn more about the history of horse racing in Japan turn them into cute horse girls and it's a very good segue to you know starting the Uma Musume mobile game it's such a good game I feel like honestly the anime was great but it really helped it a lot thanks to the video game that came out just around the same time while it was airing because you really can't talk about Uma Musume S2 without the game coming out at the same time it's really good what a great game one of my favorite games of um, this year actually Give it a try and you know, add me as a friend. Please play Uma Musume, please enjoy Uma Musume. Oh, by the way, I do want to mention the songs in the new show is also really nice. It's a really good, like, you know, to sum up for a very casual audience, I feel like Uma Musume Pretty Derby is a, it feels like a sports anime with cute girls running really, really fast and they just happen to be horses. It's great, trust me. If you think Uma Musume is weird, just watch the anime and play the games, and then you will understand why all of us are enjoying this really wild series called Uma Musume. Alright, anime number 4 on the list is Nomad Megalobox 2. So, Megalobox is an advanced form of boxing where competitors wear metal frames called gear. When the first ever Megalonia tournament took place, Gearless Joe became its champion and known to all as a legendary fighter. However, soon after, he lost an exhibition match against the second champion and vanished from the public eye. Seven years later, Joe now goes by Nomad and he keeps a low profile, occasionally fighting in a few underground matches to get by. He is haunted by hallucinations and relies on a set of painkillers to numb his mind. During a match, Joe wins against an opponent Chief who purposely loses for some extra cash from gamblers. Subsequently, Joe discovers that Chief is from a community of immigrants called the Casa. Chief is gradually trying to make enough money to purchase the land where they live illegally. At first, Joe hesitates to get involved, but eventually he decides to lend the Casa a helping hand. So if you guys watch 
Megalobox One. You know, it's a spiritual sequel to Ashita no Joe or Tomorrow's Joe, a very legendary boxing anime. Such a good anime, such a good manga. I love the original Megalobox. You know, Joe rising as an underground, you know, guy who doesn't wear equipment. He becomes the world champion. And it's such a great underdog story. I loved it too much. I love. I love. I don't really watch a lot of sports anime, but like, I like it when it involves boxing or wrestling. So this is boxing, and I thought it was a really nice comeback story because you watch a champion like Joe, who was like the top guy in the world. He lost to the up and coming champion, and then he disappeared. You know, he fights through all his uh, difficulties, and maybe I'm not gonna spoil anything, but maybe he finally gets his release. His uh. Come up and, or maybe you know he finally gets back on his feet. The and by the way, I want to mention that the animation for this show,、uh, I believe it was by TMS Entertainment and Tohoku Shinsha. The art style from the original show shines through again. It's like a little bit. It feels like an old, air quotes, low quality animation, but it's still pretty nice.、It、looks really nice. The entire cast is great. And I want to give a mention to the guy who write the theme song for the show, which is、uh, Mabanua. He wrote the theme song for the opening, the ending, and the entire soundtrack. And one thing I liked about it is though that like it feels like it's a very Spanish slash Mexican vibe to it. I feel like it's more like Mexican. It's great, like you know, a group of immigrants come in, they want to get you know try to find their way in life in this situation. It's a great story, you know, of.、Um, Moving to a new land and surviving for your own, and at the same time we have Joe who's doing his best to become champion again. You know, try his second shot in life. People who are willing to help him. It's a wonderful story. I thought it was great. You know, I watched it in one sitting. I actually didn't watch it or original airing date of、uh, April to June. I watched it somewhere in August actually, and it was really great. Like honestly, it's it's like a shonen anime where. The main character is not super strong anymore. It's great. If you want an, like an underdog story of a champion becoming an underdog again and then rising back up the ranks to become the best, it's great. If you love a good boxing anime, good watch Megalo Box. If you want to see you know a broken down man fix his life back together after difficulties, aiming for his dreams again, you know I love this kind of inspirational stories. Definitely give Megalo Box two a try. And last but not least, we have S S S S Dino Zenon by the wonderful people saving anime Trigger. One day after school, first-year high school student Yomogi Asanaka comes across a starving man under a bridge. Introducing himself as Galma, the strange drifter informs Yomogi that he is a kaiju user, a person who deals with the kaiju, monsters who bring harm to the city and its citizens. The following evening, Yomogi runs into Gaoma and his classmate Yume Minami. Simultaneously, a kaiju appears in a populated area of the city. Due to Gaoma's lack of experiencing control of the kaiju, he brings out a mysterious object from a glowing pouch, summoning a giant robot known as Dinozenon. Requiring the cooperation of four people, the mecha drags Gaoma, Yomogi, Minami, and Koyomi Yamanaka. An unemployed man who was wandering on the street into its cockpit. Their encounter with the kaiju marks the beginning of the entanglement with kaiju eugenicists, kaiju users who manipulate kaiju with ill intent, and their effort towards bringing out the full potential of Dinozen. Now, I don't really need to explain why I love this show so much because if you love Gritman, Tokusatsu Gritman, and if you watch S S S S Gritman. You will definitely love Dinozenon Full Stop. It is a mecha slash tokusatsu anime. I love mecha. I love tokusatsu. I like my Gundams. I like my Geta Robo. I like Power Rangers, Kamen Rider. You know, this is this show was made for me. I loved it so much. If you and best part is if you watch the original Gridman from way back when, there is an episode that actually ties into this season. And it's actually like the basis for the entire the entire Dino Zenon anime. It's it's amazing once you realize who is what and like oh my god, it blows your mind. It is so good. And you know, Studio Trigger they make quality animation. 
It's really well done. I think it was about 12 episodes. Yeah. If you like combining mecha, if you watch the original, like the SSSS Gridman, you will love this show. If you want to kick ass, Mecha slash Tokusatsu anime, this is the show for you. If you want a banger theme song by once again Oishi Masayoshi and Uchida Maya, you're back again. If you want to watch just a really good show in general of this year, I highly recommend watching Dinosaur. Yes, like I know it's not Kimetsu no Yaiba tier quality animation, but it's really well done. The story of high school kids are uh, going through the difficulties in high school, you know, making friends, tensions of adolescence, difficulties of uh, talking to your friends. It's wonderful, like, it feels like a wonderful growing up story also at the same time. So yeah, you get growing up story, kick-ass mecha tokusatsu action, great music, cool robots. This is the show you want to watch, 100%. Alright, and that is it for my top 5 favorite anime of 2021. If you guys liked it, please leave a comment on the YouTube page. If you guys absolutely hate the choices I made, leave a comment too. Tell me what your favorite anime is. If you think my comments are shit, you think Ash is terrible taste in anime, why don't you show me what your favorite anime is? Please convince me to watch XXYY anime. I'm always willing to learn this show is good, this show is bad. Like yeah, please tell me. Even if it's like Record of Ragnarok, tell me why you love Record of Ragnarok. But yes, uh, like this video, please leave a comment below in the comment section if you're watching on YouTube. If you're listening on Anchor, please also, you know, check out the YouTube version. Leave a comment there. Tell me what your favorite anime of 2021 is. Please share this video with all your friends. Share this uh, Anchor to all your friends. Tell them about the awesomeness of Higeraji. Once again guys, thank you. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. According to my script here, it says Kokuchi Senden time. So yes, I believe next week on the 23rd, I'll be appearing on Afa Station TV Play. We're going to play Tales of Arise, which I mentioned earlier in this uh, video slash audio. So if you want to see me play decently well in the game, come check out our stream. It will be on the Afa Anime Festival Asia YouTube page around maybe 8 p.m. on the 23rd. Come check with us and maybe we have even other great content which I cannot say right now. All I will say is if you like what I like, cool anime, my anime taste, if you know my anime taste, you definitely want to check out Afa Station TV Play next week. Alright, so SNS Senden over here, according to my script, it says here, if you want to follow me on my Twitter for my daily shit posts and wrestling contents, if you want to follow me on my Instagram for my not so frequent but wonderful photos, or if you want to follow me on my Twitch for my once in a while game streams, which I'm trying to do again in the evenings. I'm doing my best, okay guys? Please give me a break. <laughs> follow me on Ashman1021. That's A-S-H underbar M-A-N-N 1021. That's Ashman1021. A-S-H underbar M-A-N-N 1021 on Twitter, Instagram, and Twitch. Follow me here on my YouTube channel. If you haven't followed this channel already, please remember to click on the subscribe button for more content in future episodes. Because I will be uploading a few more unboxing videos. Please press the notification bell for the latest updates as well. Alright, so next week's theme. I have something I really want to talk about. I don't think it might garner as many views as this one, but I'm going to talk about wrestling. Yes. What kind of wrestling? The answer is yes. Everything and anything about wrestling for people who A. Probably has no idea what wrestling is. B. Has given up on wrestling because wrestling became boring. Or C. They want to hear me talk about good ass wrestling. So yes, my next episode will be about wrestling. Please look forward to that. And on that note, my name's Ash. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Higaraji, and I will see you guys next time. Bye bye! Hey guys, it's Kenny Omega here, and I'm asking you to tune in to Higa Channel.